Thank you, Judge. Well, Ms. Solomon, you have the uh, the USF records in front of you, correct? Page 224. Come Page 224. That's the record of a Dr. Gabriel White, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And Dr. White was a psychiatrist, correct? Yes, sir. And in that first paragraph, he writes, no mood episodes or psychotic symptoms, correct? About four lines down. Yes, sir. Okay. And in the second paragraph, again, he starts that paragraph with no mood or psychotic symptoms, correct? That's correct. In the mental status examination, he writes, uh, I guess, the thought process is linear, logical, goal-directed, correct? Yes. No hallucinations, delusions, or suicidal, homicidal ideations, intent, or plan, correct? Correct. And again, in the assessment, no mood or psychotic symptoms, correct? That's correct. And then she is seen on June 30th, again by Dr. White, correct? 228. Yes. And again, there's no evidence of any psychotic symptoms observed in that record, correct? In the mental status examination, there's no hallucinations, delusions, or suicidal, homicidal ideations, intent, or plan, correct? Correct. And then on July 8th, she is seen by a, I believe, a social worker or licensed um, mental health uh, clinician, correct? What page, sir? Page 234 through 236. July 8th, 2010 record. Yes. Okay. And that was a Miss uh, Tobias, correct? That's what I was looking for. And 236. And in that report, there's no indication of hallucinations, correct? I don't see any note of any, no. Okay, there's no delusions, correct? No observable delusions, no discussion of delusions, correct? Correct. Okay, and there's no suicidal ideation and there's no homicidal ideation as well, correct? Correct. Okay, and this continues up until January 20th of 2011, correct? that she is seeing experts at USF, or excuse me, not experts, but clinicians at USF, correct? Yes. Okay, and she sees these doctors at USF and uh, Ms. Marsh, who is another social worker or licensed uh, clinician, at least 26 times, correct? Correct. Okay, between the time of June 2010 and January 2011, 26 times she is seen, correct? I, I didn't count them, but I'll take it away. Okay. And then towards the end, on January 20th, 
She is seen by Ms. Marsh, correct? Page 318. Okay, do you have that record in front of you? Yes, I do. Okay, there's no indication uh, of observable delusions in that report, correct? Well, say that again. There's no documentation of observable delusions in that report. But there are other psychotic symptoms okay. uh, referred to. Okay. But the thought process was linear, logical, and goal-directed, correct? That's what she wrote here. Okay. And the thought content was appropriate per conversation, void of delusional constructs, correct? That's what she wrote. Okay. Suicidal, suicidal is a question, and, it cur and it's documented currently denies, correct? Correct. Homicidal ideation, and that is answered no, correct? Correct. Concentration was intact, correct? Yes. Judgment was intact, correct? That's what she wrote. Insight was poor, as into her condition, correct? Yes. Okay. And goal-directed, appropriately goal-directed. That is what's documented in this report, correct? That's what's documented in this report, yes. And in those USF records, there is no documented psychosis in, in that time period from June 2010 to January 2011, correct? Would you give me a moment, please? Sure. <coughs> Now, you also received the Winmore records, correct? Yes. And those were records from November 2010, correct? Yes. And she went into Winmore because she had a car crash, correct? That's correct. And isn't it true that the reason she had the car crash is because she blacked out from alcohol and drug consumption? That was, al that was the allegation, yes. Okay. And you considered the Winmore records? Yes. Obviously. And her diagnosis, and she was under the treatment of a Dr. Kevin Butler, correct? Yes. And she, her, act, her diagnosis was that she was opiate dependent continuous, correct? Yes. And then her, act, her diagnosis was again alcohol dependence, in parentheses, alcoholism, correct? 
Yes. And the record also indicates that then her diagnosis was major depression recurrent, severe, correct? Yes. And in the record, doesn't it state that uh, Ms. Schenecker indicated that she was drinking, having, drinking 10 drinks per day? Yes. Okay. And also, doesn't it indicate that the defendant indicated that she was abusing pain pills? Yes. And doesn't that record, the records also <coughs> indicate that she was noted morning drinking and morning shakes as well as blackouts? Yes. Okay. And they also, re they also did a mental status examination of her when she went into Winmore, correct? Yes. And that mental status examination revealed that she was non-psychotic with positive suicidal ideation, correct? Yes. Okay. And she also minimized her alcohol use to them, correct? Yes. Okay. And she also indicated to them that she was going to drink if she wanted to, correct? Yes. Okay, but she was in there for al to treat, deal with her al alcoholism. Yes. Okay, and she was in there because her husband basically said, you need to go into this facility, correct? That's correct. Okay, but she didn't want to, right? Correct. Okay, and it was also indicated that um, she was monitored for lethality and denied suicidal thoughts, correct? Yes. Okay, and I take it when she was monitored, she would have been seen by a nurse or somebody on a unit watching them, watching her behavior? Yes. Okay. And when she was discharged, and she went in on November 10th, correct? Yes. And she stayed until the 28th, correct? Is that yes. accurate? Yes. Okay. And when she was discharged, she denied suicidal or homicidal ideation, correct? Yes. Okay. And they decided that it was appropriate to discharge her, correct? Yes. Okay. And in those records, there's no indication that she was psychotic during that time period, correct? Yes. Okay. And in those records, the nurses would check her, basically assess her for potential suicide, correct? Yes. And they always found that she was not a risk at that time, correct? At that time, yes. At that time. Okay. And that's November of 2010, correct? Yes. Okay. And that's something you considered as well? Yes. Okay. And you have indicated that you met with the defendant at the jail on several occasions, correct? Yes. And I take it when you first went into the jail and met with her, you introduced yourself, correct? Yes. You told her why you were there, correct? Yes. You told her who you were working for, correct? Yes. Okay. And you would do that each time you met with her, correct? Yes. And the first time you met with her, she knew she was in the jail, correct? Yes. Okay. She knew she had killed her children, correct? Yes. Okay. And as you've indicated, the defendant is very intelligent, right? Yes. This is a lady who, when she was in California, was able to do two elementary school grades in the same year, correct? That's correct. This is a lady who graduated high school, correct? Yes. She graduated college, correct? That's correct. And then she went into the military, correct? That's correct. And when she went into the military, she was assigned to military intelligence, correct? That's right. And they trained her to learn Russian, correct? Yes. And I take it she would have learned Russian fluently, correct? Yes. And Russian is not an easy language to learn, is it? No. And she learned that language in one year, correct? Correct. Well enough that she could debrief potential Russian uh, defectors, correct? Yes. And that was her job? That's right. Okay. And at that time, while you're in the jail with her, she tells you that she has been molested, correct? Yes. And she tells you that, and that's a verbal, rec basically she's just telling you that, correct? Yes. And she tells you about two su suicide attempts, correct? I am not certain that she told me that directly. I think I got that from the records. Okay, which record? I, I don't <coughs> recall right now. Okay. Isn't it true that there is no documented suicide attempts in the records? Not in the hospital.
had attempted to commit suicide? I don't think so. Okay. Is there any Baker Act record of the defendant trying to commit suicide? No. Okay. And the defendant told you that basically before she committed the murder, she was in bed for eight weeks, correct? Primarily in bed. Okay. She was in and out. And she told you during those last weeks before the shooting, she was not coherent, correct? The, the last week or weeks? Last weeks. Weeks, plural. She was not coherent. I, I believe she said that. Okay. And she told you that she could barely get out of bed, correct? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Yet she was able to drive her car during that time period, correct? Yes. Okay. And she was able to go speak with Dr. Obergon during that time period, correct? At times. She did miss a couple appointments. Okay. But she did see him on December 3rd, yes. correct? Yes. Uh -huh. She saw him on December 10th, correct? Yes. And she saw him on uh, December 28th, correct? Yes. Okay. And you reviewed those records, correct? Yes. There's no indication she was in her pajamas during those visits, no. correct? Okay, would that be something that a clinician should put a note about? Put a uh, document in reference, her, her dress at the time, if it was appropriate or inappropriate, if she was disheveled? Well, if it were inappropriate, I'm sure he would have put a note. Okay, and during that time period, she also drove and spoke with Ms. Marsh, correct? Yes. Okay, specifically on December 16th, <coughs> yes. December 28th, yes, as well, and then on January 20th as well, correct? Yes. yes. January 20th, 2011. And she did participate in the carpool, correct? At times, yes. Okay. In the carpool, she would have to drive from her ho home in New Tampa to King High School, correct? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. And she would have to drive on um, Bruce B. Downs, correct? Yes. And were you familiar with Bruce B. Downs back in 2011? Yes. There was a lot of construction on that road, correct? Yes. It would take a lot of concentration to drive on that road? Yes. Bumper to bumper traffic? Yes. Okay. And she also, during this time period, she would get out of bed and get her medications, correct? I don't know that. Okay. And she'd also, you, you never were provided any um, pharmacy records? Yes, but I don't know whether she was appropriately taking her medications. Okay. The question is, did she go and get her medications refilled? Let me yes. Put, okay. And she was able to drive her car and get her dry cleaning, correct? I don't, I, I don't remember reading a record about that. Okay. And, but you do recall her that she was able to drive from New Tampa to Oldsmar to purchase a gun, correct? Yes. Okay. And... While she was at that gun store, she was dressed appropriately, correct? Yes. Okay. And she was able to ha have a conversation with the clerks, correct? Yes, that's correct. And she would have make eye contact with them, correct? Yes. She would shake their hands? Yes. Okay. She was able to look at guns, correct? Yes. She was able to manipulate the gun by putting bullets into it, correct? Yes. And she was able to understand what they were speaking about, correct? Yes. She was able to sign her name, correct? Yes. Okay. And her hair was done appropriately when she went to the gun store, correct? Yes. Okay. And that was on the January 22nd, correct? Correct. Five days before the murders, correct? Yes. Okay. And when you spoke with her, the defendant told you that when she went into that gun store, she had already decided to kill herself and kill her children, correct? Correct. Okay. And, okay. And she never told Miss Marsh that she wanted to kill herself or kill her children, correct? Correct. And she never told that to Dr. Obregon either, correct? Correct. And she did tell you that she shot her son while on the way to soccer practice, correct? Yes. And she told you that she killed her daughter when she came home, correct? Yes. And she told you that um, she placed her children 
in it, well, she placed her daughter in the bed and put the sheet over her, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. And then she put a sheet over, or a blanket over her son, correct? Yes. And she also told you that she put notes on the door, correct? Yes. And she told you that was after Mr. Shaw had come to the house, correct? No, I, I don't think that, that you have that in my deposition. I don't okay. think so. Did she tell you that? No. Okay. So she didn't tell you that somebody knocked on the door and then she put the notes on the, on no, the door? No, she did not tell me okay. that. But she remembered putting the notes on the door, correct? Yes. Okay. And the notes basically said that they had gone to New York City, be back, what was the date, Tuesday? Or they, they went to back, they went to New York City, correct? Yes, I think be back Monday or something like okay. that, or Sunday, yes. So, so basically, it was an attempt to hide the bodies, correct? Oh, I don't know what it was an attempt for. I, I don't know. Okay. But you would agree that... She said it was because, so the carpool wouldn't be looking for the kids. Okay. And so they basically, nobody would come into the house, correct? Correct. Okay. I guess. I mean, I don't, I don't know what was in her mind about that, actually. Okay. But you do know that her husband was coming back that following Tuesday, correct? Yes, she had told so me. So if nobody's looking for the kids, he would be the first one to find the, the kids, correct? I, I don't know that, sir. Okay. Well, he would come into the house and find the bodies, right? I don't know if, okay. if someone else might have come in there before then. Okay. And one thing she did tell you is that um, she took the lithium and the, the Coumadin after she had killed the children, correct? Correct. Okay. So she was not under the influence of those drugs at the time that she pulled the triggers, correct? Pulled the trigger. That's correct. Okay. And she told you that she was disappointed that she had to wait um, in order to bring the gun home, correct? Correct. Okay. But at the same time, she told you she really didn't remember the time period between when she bought the gun and when she committed the murders, correct? Right. I think she was disappointed at the moment she found out that she wouldn't get the gun that day. And then I think <coughs> she started the drinking and the drugging and probably wasn't able to think those kinds of thoughts at okay. that point. One thing she did tell you is that she recognized that when she pulled out the gun, on Bo, that Bo was upset by that, correct? Correct. In fact, he was so upset he threatened to hit her, correct? Correct. Okay. And then she told Bo that it wasn't a real gun, correct? She said it was a toy gun. Okay. Recognizing that Bo saw it as a real gun, correct? Correct. Okay. And recognizing that Bo was frightened by the gun, correct? I, I don't know that. Okay. And she did tell you that she shot Bo in the mouth, correct? Correct. Okay. And she told you that she shot Calix in the mouth, correct? Well, she said in the front part of the face. I, I guess, I guess yes. Okay. I'm, I'm in the front not... part of the face, maybe above the lip? Right. Okay. And she did tell you by October 2010 that she was drinking and drugging more, correct? I'm sorry, say that. Could you repeat? And she told you by October 2010 that she was drinking and drugging more, correct? By October. I think that's correct. Okay. And you read the journal entries, correct? Yes. Okay. And in those journal en in entries, the defendant writes that Calix thought she was ignorant, thought the defendant was ignorant, correct? Correct. The defendant wrote, that Calix said to her mother, I hate you, correct? Correct. She said that, that Calix said, you're not my mom, I wish you were dead, correct? Correct. She wrote that Calix had lost all respect for her, correct? Correct. She wrote that Calix called the mother, the defendant evil, correct? Correct. And she said that her daughter bullied her, correct? Correct. Okay. And she called the defendant a horrible parent, correct? Yes. And the defendant told you that she heard Calix telling her dad to divorce her mom, correct? She said she overheard a telephone conversation in which Calix 
asked her dad if she would divorce her mom. I think that's how. Okay. And the defendant told you she wrote a letter to. Asked her dad if she would divorce her mom. I think that's how. Okay. And the defendant told you she wrote a letter to Calix, correct? When she was about 14? Yes. Okay. And she told you that Calix never responded to, to that letter, correct? She had hoped for a dialogue and the defendant never, or the Calix never responded That's to it. That's correct. Okay. In fact, the defendant believed that Calix showed it to one of her girlfriends, correct? Right, and she was very embarrassed by that. Okay. Humiliated by that? I don't remember if she used that word, but I know she was embarrassed. Okay, she was embarrassed by that, right? Yes. Because the girls were laughing at her, right? That was her perception. That was her perception. And the daughter was not speaking to her mother at the time of the murders, correct? She was speaking to her as little as possible. Little as possible. And Calix had told her mother, you know, when I move out of here, I'm never going to see you again. I don't want to see you again, correct? I'm never coming back, I think. I'm never coming back. And the defendant struck Calix not once but two times, correct? That's in the record, sir. Okay. So you would agree that the mother was pretty angry at Calix, correct? <laughs> yes. Okay. And there was, there was a lot of document, well, in reference to Parker Schinnaker, would you agree that the defendant believed that Parker Schinnaker wanted to, to divorce her? That was something she worried about throughout the last several years of the marriage. Okay. In fact, she told Miss Marsh that she believed that the email that was going around the family that she was not allowed to see was about Parker wanting to divorce her, correct? That's correct. And that email, that nobody would share that email with the defendant, made the defendant angry, correct? Yes. Okay. And the defendant told you that she felt that Parker was pushing her out of the, out of the family, correct? I don't remember those words, but yes. Okay. And she felt that Parker lived in his own little world, correct? I don't recall those words. Okay. Refresh your memory to look at your deposition from November 6, 2013 about that. What page, sir? Page 205, lines 18 through 21. Yes, sir, that's in the deposition. Okay, so she did tell you that she felt that Parker lived in his own world, correct? That's correct. Okay. And she also indicated to you that Parker would not even say hello or goodbye to her, correct? Correct. And the defendant was very upset that when they, one time when they spoke to a counselor, that Parker basically did not list her as a priority in his life, correct?
was asking you about, according to the defendant, if Parker considered her to be a priority in his life. Did she comment on that? Yes, she did. And she indicated that she was hurt that the defendant or that Parker did not list her as one of his priorities in his life, correct? Correct. Okay. And she indicated to you that she always remembered that, correct? Yes, and that was in 2003. Okay. She said it hurt her very much. Okay. And also, the defendant told you that she felt that the kids and Parker were distancing themselves from her, correct? Correct. Okay. And that she felt victimized, correct? What, what page are you on? Page 272, 217, excuse me. Okay, could you please repeat the question? Basically, that she felt victimized. Yes. Okay. And when, in the time period that she claimed that she was always bedridden, she was upset that none of her family members came in to visit her, correct? That's true. She didn't feel that her husband was compassionate, correct? Yes. She didn't feel that he taught the children how to be compassionate, correct? Yes. She felt ignored by the family, correct? Yes. During that time period. During that time period. And when she was in Winmore, she was in Winmore during Thanksgiving, correct? Yes. Okay. And she had asked Parker to get her out of there before she actually left the facility, correct? Yes. And the family went up to the Panhandle area and, and had celebrated Thanksgiving without her, correct? That's correct. Okay. And based on all that, she was angry at her husband, correct? I don't remember if she ever used the word, but I imagine she was unhappy. Okay. And if she were to get divorced, well, she was a, a stay-at-home mom, correct? Yes. And her husband provided her with cars, correct? Uh, my understanding is that she bought the last car with the, her own money. Okay. But if she got divorced, she would lose her husband, correct? Yes. Her daughter wouldn't want to live with her, correct? Objection, speculation. You're aware that she um, told the Mr. Tanzo and Mr. Monaco at the gun store that she wanted the gun for protection because of burglaries in the neighborhood, correct? Yes. Okay. So she lied to them as, for, as to the real reason that she wanted the gun, correct? Yes. Okay, so she hid the real reason from them as well, correct? Yes. Because she knew that they would not sell her a gun if she indicated that she wanted to kill people with it, correct? I assume so. <clears throat> And you've testified that you do not believe that the defendant knew right or wrong at the time of the incident, correct? Or at the time of the shootings, correct? Correct. But in her journal, she wrote to her husband, I'm sorry I've taken that, aw all, taken that away from you, correct? Well, at that point when she wrote in the journal, she had that thought. I don't know if she could really appreciate the wrongfulness of what she did. Okay. But she did write she was planning a Saturday massacre, correct? Yes. And she wrote the evil starts Thursday, correct? Yes. 
She wrote, I'm sorry, so sorry, I don't know what to say, but I sensed divorce was inevitable, correct? Yes. Okay. She told the detectives that this was the worst thing she had ever done, correct? Yes. She told the detectives she felt horrible about what happened, correct? Yes. Okay. She told the detectives that Parker was going to be upset with her, correct? Yes. And she told the detective she didn't want to go to prison, correct? Yes. Okay. And she told her husband, I guess I stomped your heart flat, huh? Correct? Yes. Okay. And you've indicated that one of the first times that you interviewed the defendant was at Tampa General Hospital, correct? Yes. And that was on January 28, 2011, correct? Yes. So close in time to when the shooting occurred, correct? Yes. And at that time, you've indicated that she was confused, shaky, and in and out of confusion, correct? Yes. But you asked her questions, right? That's correct. And you asked her basically leading questions, correct? Yes or no questions? I think there were a variety of question types. But she was able to answer your questions, correct? Uh, mainly, yes. Okay. Well, she knew she was in the hospital, correct? Yes. And she was not crying hysterically, correct? I believe she cried during part of that interview. But she wasn't hysterical the entire conversation, correct? No, she was still drugged. Okay. And she gave you some family history about herself, correct? Yes, she did. Okay. And she also told you at one point in your interviews that she had a good childhood, correct? Yes. Okay. And she told you that she thought her husband was seeking a divorce, correct? Yes. And she told you that she felt that her husband had lost his compassionate side, correct? Yes. That her husband was ignoring her, correct? Yes. And that her husband didn't understand her disease, correct? I don't recall that exactly. Okay. But she did tell you about the email going around the family that she was not allowed to see, correct? Yes. That she told Miss Marsh that she was angry about, correct? She said she was hurt and angry, yes. Okay, hurt and angry. She told you that she uh, binge drank in college and the army, correct? Correct. Okay. And she told you she had a plan to kill the... And she told you she was seeing Dr. Obergon, correct? Yes. And she told you that she slept fine the night before the murders, correct? I don't recall that. Okay. Did she tell you if she was excited to execute her plan? Yes. Okay. And at one point, she was asked if she told Dr. Obregon about her plan in reference to the children, correct? Yes. And her response was that she didn't tell a soul because they thwarted it somehow. Didn't she say that? Yes. Okay. And so basically, doesn't that indicate that she knew that other people would look at her plan as wrong? I don't, I, I don't know that. I, I think that... I don't know what was in her mind about that. I, I, not necessarily. Okay. She did tell you that it was a horrible, horrible thing to see my two beautiful babies that way, correct? Yes. Okay. And she did write in the journal that she didn't want to shoot herself with the gun because it was of the destruction, correct? Yes. Okay. And you told her that, that in your response to her saying... It, it was a horrible, horrible thing to see my two beautiful babies. You told her that it was, that it, that you imagined it was awful, correct? I don't recall, sir. Okay. Now, it's your opinion that a sane woman, sane women do not kill their children, correct? It is. Okay. That's so, correct. So under no circumstances in your mind will a woman ever be found sane of committing a murder, correct? committing a murder of their children, correct? No, that's not correct. There could be a rare exception, but in general, I don't think sane people kill their children. Okay. And what is your definition of sanity or insanity at the time of the crime? I think she was, I think for the, 
for the past few weeks she had been in and out of a psychotic uh, state, particularly those last few days. What is your definition of legal insanity at the time of a crime? That she didn't know right from wrong. She didn't know the wrongfulness of her act. That makes her insane. Okay. And what, I, do, I don't believe she knew that what she did was wrong. Okay. What is the role of society in that definition? Well, society sets those <coughs> standards, but when you're psychotic, you don't remember what those are, or you, and you don't care about them. You, you're only, she was only focused on her goal, which was to get out of the pain that she was in and to take her children to heaven with her. Okay. So is it fair to say that since you don't believe sane women, sane women kill their children, So basically, your opinion is that sane women do not kill their children. You did not look at the evidence in this case, correct? No, not correct. Okay. No other questions. Thank you, ma'am. Dr. Solomon, um, you had a chance when you were looking at all the information, did you have a chance to review Gerald Tanso's deposition? No, I did not read his deposition. The gun store owner, did you review his deposition? No. Okay. Were you made aware of the conditions of Ms. Scheneker at the time when she went and purchased the firearm? Can you be more specific? How she appeared in, in the video. Were you made aware of her appearance at the time of the video and the purchase of the firearm? From what I know about it, I thought she was appropriately dressed. Okay. Did you factor that in or did you take that into consideration as far as your ultimate opinion in this case? Yes, it goes back to what I said about psychotic people can appear to be functioning normally and they can drive cars and dress appropriately and say appropriate things they can work they, they can go on automatic pilot okay so as far as miss Shenneker driving her children to school or, or participating in functions after Parker Shenneker left did you take that into consideration as well yes okay and what are your thoughts on that? What are your opinions about her functioning or driving during that time frame? I believe she wanted to do the best she could and that she pushed herself to do that. And I think a lot of what she did, she was on automatic pilot. Ms. Rudigawa talked to you about her records from that June time period up until January 2011, visiting either Dr. Obregon or, or Elizabeth Marsh 26 times. Is it your opinion or what is your opinion about her seeking treatment for her illness? I think that she tried her best to seek treatment. I think there were times when she was too depressed to get out of bed to go. But I do think she wanted treatment uh, and she wanted to feel better. That's real clear. Based on your review of the records, other times when she would have depressions, would she be able to get out of those depressions, or were there times when she came out of weeks being depressed? In, yes, in past times when she spent days or weeks in bed she was able to recover and I think that was her strategy if she just stayed in bed long enough the depression would resolve itself and she would feel better okay. but she had to get out of bed because 
her husband left the country? Yes. Okay. When you're talking about her relationship with Calix and, and with her family in general, did she talk to you about her, her marriage and her family when they first got married and when the children were younger? Yes. What did she tell you about that time? Well, she didn't say this to me, but in the records I read that she did have some periods of depression early on in the relationship and in the marriage. When you were talking about the children when they were little, did she talk to you about functions or activities that she did with the children? I'm trying to remember specifically. I know she spent a lot of time with them. She was the primary caregiver. Uh, I think she talked about doing things with them uh, that a mom would do with her kids. Um, and, yeah, okay. Yeah. When Mr. Udagawa talked about interviewing Parker Sheneker, you did not interview Parker Sheneker. I didn't know that I was able to do that, or okay. I probably would have asked. Did you have an opportunity to review a lengthy deposition? Yes, I, I read it very Shepard. carefully. Okay. And did you have an opportunity to review um, what Dr. Otto stated about his interview with Dr. Yes. Schoenaker? Was that something that you took into consideration as far as your evaluation in this case? Yes, very much so, because I think that um, Colonel Schoenaker understood how serious her illness was, and he referred to her as a sick member in the family. Were you provided with the email communication between Parker Schoenaker and Dr. Obergon yes. during that last time frame, November and December? Yes, ma'am, I was. Okay. And were you able to discern from that email the observations from Parker Schoenaker regarding how Ms. Schoenaker was doing during that time frame? Excuse me, I have to juggle some, so, of, this, some of these things here. Could you repeat the question, please? Were you able to, did the, e, did the email assist you in Mr. Schoenaker's observations of Julie Schoenaker at that time? Yes. What did you learn about, based on your review of all those things, how Ms. Schoenaker was doing in that November time from rehab to, from the November date to December when she was in bed? Okay, we're talking about the emails to Dr. Obergon. From Parker Schoenaker as well as whatever other records you've reviewed. Right. She made comments like, I mean, I'm sorry, Colonel Schoenaker made comments to the effect that she was in very bad shape, uh, that her memory is shot and her balance was way off, and she's been failing quite a bit lately. I'm not sure if she's taking her meds, he said. And then she, he stated that it's the first time she's been like this in for, the, for this long in 20 years, that's a quote. And she, he said, I know she cannot, she can't wish herself well, but, and she, he said she mentioned suicide, but not that she's thinking of acting on it. And he said he was hoping that her energy was too low to kill herself. Um, now, as far as the review of Dr. Obergon's records. Is there an indication in December that Julie Schoenaker is beginning to tell Dr. Obergon that she is, in fact, having suicidal thoughts? I'm not recalling if she used those words, but she definitely told him that she was, what was going on, and, and Colonel Schoenaker told him that she was in very bad shape. When you were talking about the letter that Julie Schoenaker wrote and 
to Calix. Mm -hmm. When was that done? That was uh, in 2000, November 2008. What was Ms. Schenecker's, what did she tell her daughter about her illness at that time? She said that she wanted to let her know about her unrelenting depression. And she said, um, she told her that her, that her dad and her had researched her condition and said that her dad had lived and watched her in horror and sadness and confusion and anger as I lost my zeal for life lost my memory, got confused easily, got emotional, sad all the time, crying, short-tempered, disorganized, and sometimes I didn't talk or I stayed in bed in pain for days or weeks at a time. And she said of, of her husband, Parker Scheneker, he understands now that it's the disease causing the lack of energy and that it affects my brain and its ability to function at a high level. And then she said, I think the chemicals released into my body during these years helped fend off the depression during the time that the kids were little, she was talking about. And she tells, she tells her daughter, I'm so proud of you and you bring me so much joy. Um, and then she said she was free of the monster, she calls her illness, for a few years after the children were born. And she says, then it came back with a fury. It was so severe that I wasn't getting out of bed. I was a lost soul. When Ms. Schenecker refers to kind of losing her zeal for life, did she talk to you about the time that she, she retired or, or got discharged from the military, ending her military career? She said part of the reason that she retired from the military after 10 years was because of her depression. And she tried to hide her depression when she was in the military. It was not as severe at that time, but she was not wanting that to be an issue. Did she explain to you how she tried to hide her depression during that time frame? Oh, yes. To be on the scope. No, over. You can answer that. I, I can answer it, Chuck. Yeah, yes. Um, she said that there were times she was so depressed when she was in the military that she would go off for several days. I guess she would take a short leave and she would uh, be in a uh, hotel room by herself just sleeping or, or just trying for the depression to go away. When you were reviewing the records, the UCF records, as far as Ms. Schenecker's insight, what were the indications about her insight? Which records? Her, the UCF records. I'm sorry, the USF records. Oh. Okay. Uh, several times the, uh, the psychiatrist and the uh, therapist comment or noted in the records that she had poor insight and poor judgment. When you were talking before about the psychotic features and Ms. Rudigawa talked to you about those records from June um, 2010 up to January, <coughs> in order for Ms. Schenecker, Mrs. Schenecker to be psychotic or your thoughts of her being psychotic in January at the time of the purchase of the firearm and the shootings, does that require her to be consistently psychotic in the six months leading up? No, not at all. In fact, even during that week, uh, someone with this condition can come in and out of the psychosis, in and out of the psychotic thinking. But I think that she was mainly in it during that time. When you were talking before about one of the 
psychotic episodes that she had where she was trying to take from her psychiatrist's comb and impregnate herself at USF, and that was back in 2009, indicating that the psychiatrist was trying to save her. At that time, do you have any indication about whether she was denying or admitting having hallucinations or delusions at that time? I don't recall her being asked if she was having delusions. I think she believed what she was thinking, and that's what made it a delusion. Does a psychotic person or a person having false beliefs, do they have an appreciation or an understanding that their beliefs are false? No. No, they do not. That's by definition a delusion. If I could have one moment. Dr. Solomon, when we were talking about your opinion and the basis of your opinion, did you consider everything that you were provided in order to render your ultimate opinion in this case? Yes. Okay. And as Mr. Degal was talking to you earlier about your deposition, um, were you deposed multiple times in this case? Yes, I was deposed three times. Okay. And at, in between the times when you were deposed, were you continuing to review information on the case? Yes, I was. As I said, I was still reading at 11.30 last night. And are you, is there anything that would change your opinion at this point, or is your opinion that Ms. Scheneker was insane at the time of the offense? In my opinion, based on all of my contacts in clinical interviews with Ms. Scheneker and my testing and with everything that I have read, I firmly have the opinion that she was insane at the time of the crime. Nothing further. Please just want to speak to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You may step down. You're free to go. Thank you, sir.